All right guys, so here we are, our final installment in our fish oil series. So in this video, we're gonna be covering all the most important research on fish oil, as well as some of the health benefits you can expect from supplementing with fish oil. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the four benefits we're gonna be talking about in this video that you can expect from supplementing with fish oil are one, benefits to heart health, two, uh, benefits to mood, three benefits to cognition, and the fourth benefit you can expect from supplementing with fish oil is benefits to inflammation. Now, again, the first health benefit that we're going to talk about today is benefits to heart health. Now, specifically, fish oil has been shown to reduce triglycerides and platelet aggregation, reduce blood pressure and increase high density lipoprotein, and it's also been shown to reduce homocysteine levels. Now, the mechanism here is somewhat complicated. However, it does appear that fish oil is somewhat reliable at inhibiting an enzyme known as the CETP enzyme, which um, when inhibited can somewhat reliably uh, decrease triglycerides, which is a, a health benefit that you see repeatedly in the research, um, as well as increase and improve cholesterol markers. So it improves and increases good cholesterol at the same time as lowering uh, bad cholesterol. And so one thing that is super Super interesting to note here um, is something that I'm not claiming. I'm not claiming that fish oil does a good job at decreasing the incidence of cardiac events, say things like strokes and heart attacks. I think the, uh, the research is fairly clear that fish oil does not improve the incidence of cardiac events. However, it does do a fairly good job at lowering and improving the biomarkers of heart health. Now, I do think this is interesting. You would typically expect to see something that improves the biomarkers of heart health to also improve the kind of like disease markers of heart health, but you don't see that correlation, which tells me that there's something else uh, going on when it comes to heart health and cardiac events. And so the major thing to grasp here is that fish oil seems extremely reliable at improving the markers of heart health while at the same time uh, not necessarily doing the entire job of lowering cardiac events. So um, if you are to supplement with fish oil, just be aware of that. Now, the second health benefit that I want to talk about in this video super quick is fish oil's benefit to mood. And now specifically, uh, the research indicates that fish oil does a fairly uh, reliable job at reducing the symptoms of major depression, uh, reducing the symptoms of anxiety. Uh, reducing the symptoms of stress and improving subjective well-being. Now, the most recent meta-analysis has also concluded that after looking at 28 of the most high-powered clinical trials that exist, that fish oil and specifically EPA supplementation was extremely effective at improving mood. Now, I will say that fish oil does appear to be a little bit more effective in individuals that have higher levels of depressive symptoms, but nonetheless, uh, fish oil does appear to be fairly reliable reliable at improving mood, especially in individuals that have a poor inflammatory response. Now, the primary mechanism here appears to be that fish oil can reliably suppress a pro-inflammatory stress response. And so one thing to note here is that when, when you consume EPA and DHA, one of two primary things happen. Either one, um, EPA and DHA are immediately metabolized into um, anti-inflammatory eicosanoids, or they can also be metabolized and stored in the phospholipid bilayer of cells. And so when your body goes through any type of stress, there is an enzyme that gets released known as phospholipase A2. And this specific enzyme gets released and releases fatty acids out of that phospholipid bilayer. And so the important thing to note here is that if you have high levels of EPA and DHA that are stored in your phospholipid bilayer, uh, when this phospholipase A2 gets released and released, releases these fatty acids into the bloodstream, there is an anti-inflammatory uh, stress response that occurs, whereas if there's high levels of omega-6 fatty acids in this phospholipid bilayer, there's a pro-inflammatory stress response that occurs. And so my point here is that when you consume high levels of EPA and DHA um, on a continual basis, you will store more of these fatty acids in your phospholipid bilayer, which later on uh, will decrease the inflammatory response um, that you experience when you experience any type 
type of stress. Now, there are some other mechanisms that are involved with move kind of downstream of this. Um, some recent research also suggests that fish oil can suppress adrenaline levels as well as cortisol levels, which are two of your primary stress neurotransmitter and hormonal markers. And so, um, again, uh, fish oil does a fairly good job at suppressing a inflammatory stress response as well as suppressing some of the, um, the typical biomarkers of stress in the body. Now, the third health benefit that I want to talk about real briefly is fish oil's ability to improve cognition. Now, specifically, fish oil has been shown to reduce symptoms of ADHD in youth, reduce cognitive decline in elderly individuals, improve memory in healthy adults, and improve processing accuracy and reaction time in healthy adults as well. Now, one thing that I do want to point out here that you may have picked up on already is uh, fish oil's ability to improve cognition, not just in elderly individuals, but also in youth as well. And because of this, it does suggest that fish oil is somewhat uh, universal in its ability to improve cognition as well. Now, the mechanisms here also seem to be mediated by the inflammatory response that omega-3 fatty acids are able to kind of help mediate. And so specifically, uh, it does appear that EPA and DHA are both somewhat effective at improving the neural inflammatory response, specifically, again, that's associated with stress. And so when you're able to suppress this inflammatory response that is triggered by stress, um, theoretically, you're also able to improve cognition as well. Now, there is also some interesting research that suggests that fish oil can also improve uh, cerebral blood flow and oxygenation. However, how fish oil does this isn't super understood yet, or at least isn't super understood by me yet, but nonetheless seems to be somewhat of a promising um, health benefit that you can expect from supplementing with uh, fish oil that also leads to improvements in cognition. Now, the fourth and final health benefit that I want to talk about in this video is fish oil's benefit to inflammation. Now, admittedly, it does seem like this um, health benefit should be the kind of like the most black and white. Um, there theoretically should be um, somewhat reliable reductions in inflammatory markers. However, the research is super conflicting at this point. It appears that inflammatory markers are only reduced in certain populations and only with super high uh, doses. Now, to be quite frank, I'm not 100% sure why this is. However, if you dive a little bit deeper into the research, you will notice that um, restricting omega-3 fatty acid intake um, in an acute setting does not increase um, inflammatory markers. And so it might be natural to assume that um, supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids would also not lead to an acute decrease of um, inflammatory markers. And this does make some sense if you think about it. Um, one of the primary benefits that it come from um, supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids is specifically that you're able to store those fatty acids um, in your cell structures that can then be released when they are needed. And so this data may also point to the importance, not necessarily of just blatant kind of just dumping a bunch of fish oil into your diet. But again, it may be more important to worry about the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids as opposed to just um, blindly increasing levels of omega-3s throughout the day. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into how to take fish oil. Now, again, the biggest question here may not be how much fish oil to take, but um, how to get to that kind of ideal one-to-one -one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. But the typical recommended dose is anywhere between one to three grams of combined EPA and DHA. Now, again, it may be more important to worry about the overall ratio as opposed to blindly focusing on omega-3 intake. However, assuming that you are taking one to three grams of EPA and DHA through your diet. I would also say that it's probably important to lower your linoleic acid content. Now, one of the huge questions that I typically also get um, is what type of fish oil is best to take? And when you look at the different types of fish oils to take, there are really three different primary forms. There is a phospholipid form, a triglyceride form, as well as an ethyl ester form. And now the phospholipid and triglyceride form are both natural forms 
forms, whereas the ethyl ester form is um, a synthetic concentrated form of fish oil. And so to focus more so on the natural forms right now, the phospholipid form that you typically find in krill oil and the triglyceride form that you find in pretty much all other uh, fish oil supplements, you typically hear that krill oil is a more absorbable and bioavailable form of EPA and DHA when compared to the triglyceride form. However, the research is just not very clear right now. Um, it does appear that the phospholipid form, the krill oil form, may be slightly more bioavailable. However, in my opinion, it just simply does not compare to the price hike um, that is experienced when you purchase krill oil. Krill oil is much more expensive when it comes to um, fish oil supplementation. And to be honest, just doesn't outweigh the possible increases in absorption that you may experience from krill oil. Now, when it comes to the ethyl ester form, um, again, this is the more synthetic concentrated version that a lot of pharmaceutical companies are producing nowadays and some fish oil companies as well. Um, however, when you look at the ethyl ester form, it does appear that it isn't as bioavailable when compared to the triglyceride form. And more specifically, it also looks like the ethyl ester form is slightly less stable, meaning that um, it is a little bit more prone to oxidation when compared to the triglyceride form. And so at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, one of the best things you can do is find a good uh, fish oil producer that is producing a triglyceride form, which seems to be the most economical form of fish oil to consume. And now this actually brings me to my last point that I kind of want to end on, which is the oxidation of fish oil. Now, this was a huge point that I heard over and over and over again after I posted my first video on fish oil. Um, and it is a somewhat legitimate concern. However, nowadays, there are just so many third-party testing companies that are out there that are testing fish oils for oxidation and discovering that the oxidation of fish oil was initially far overestimated. It is not difficult at all all to find an unoxidized fish oil on the market. And for anyone that claims that all fish oils are oxidized, it's just obviously not looking at the data to be quite frank. Now, a lot of other folks would also say if fish oil doesn't oxidize before it gets into the body, it oxidizes after it enters into the body. However, there's just not a ton of research to support this right now at the moment and completely ignores the entire um, antioxidant system that your body has in order to prevent the oxidation of these fatty acids uh, once they enter into the bloodstream. Your body literally has entire systems that are geared towards the prevention of the oxidation of fatty acids when they're in the bloodstream. Plus, you would also have to ignore the fact that your body preferentially actually creates these in order to um, put them into cell membranes because they are stable in the body. Your body wouldn't use unstable fatty acids to create structures if they were oxidized. It just doesn't make sense for your body to use something like that unless it had the capacity to prevent the oxidation before um, it has the chance to be incorporated into cell structures and body structures. Now, before I close out this video, I do want to make a statement here, and that is that I could be wrong. It is completely possible. I'm not wrong a lot but I am wrong sometimes. Though this is kind of like my personal stance at the moment from objectively looking at the data and drawing the best conclusion I can. For all I know, 10 years from now, we can have just completely different research that surfaces that completely disproves all of my assertions. However, that's just a risk I'm willing to take. I've done the best job that I can do at looking at the research and drawing the best conclusions that I can, but the nature of science is that science changes. New data arises constantly and is constantly challenging ideas in science, and I'm not arrogant enough to claim that I'm above that. But anyways, guys, I hope this video was uh, helpful for you guys. Check the description down below for any of the free guides that I've got on my website. And if you're interested in getting an omega-3 fatty acid test, there's also a link down in the description for that. But other than that, guys, I think that is it for fish oil. It is in the books. I'll see you guys next time.